Okay, so we're out again. Welcome to Motopix. And today, the shot that we're going to try and like imitate in more than one location is the vertigo shot, where the background changes the dimension of the shot as you zoom in. You've seen a, seen a similar shot in something like Jaws or ET. So that's the plan. Again, I don't have my um, zoom and lapel on me at the moment because this is kind of spread the moment thing. I don't know whether you can see, but there's where we're going to be today. And that's Pitstone Windmill. So that'll be our first subject. So we're going to try and use that as a subject. And to get this shot, we're going to use a drone. So, sorry, I do apologise. That's my daughter um, chavin it in the background. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to basically set up the drone. And I'll stick you on a tripod. And you can watch uh, us setting up really quickly. And then we're going to try and fly the drone at the windmill and get the vertigo shot that we're after. So, keep tuned. Just where it was needed Claimed in black as night Cloistered in injustice, dead In the eye of time Nobody is losing Faces merge and change But your face remains the same Okay, so we've gone and taken the shot with the drone. So the next thing to do is to bring it back and edit the shot. So I'm gonna take you through basically how this works. Now, the Virgo shot is based on two elements. It's based on the dolly, which is a movement towards or away from the subject, and a zoom, which is meant to be the opposite of the movement from the dolly. So if you were dollying in, you would zoom out during that dolly. If you were dollying out, you would zoom in and both would create the same type of effect. Now, we've done the dolly part by flying the drone, the drone towards the, the um, windmill, and now we need to do the zoom function. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So firstly, we recorded in 4K, because we, we want to be able to zoom into the image quite a lot. And if we film in 4K, it gives us a lot more detail to be able to zoom in and still come away with a usable bit of footage. So, you can use any bit of um, video editing software for this, providing you can keyframe, scale, and position adjustments within the software. If you can do that, you can do it on any bit of software. So this time around, we're gonna be using Adobe Premiere, because that's um, my software of choice. So over to the, the footage. So we need to pick our in point and our out point. So we'll get it to the point that we want. And that's the end of the shot. So we'll fly back a bit. Now forward a little bit. There's a bit of a movement around here. So we'll start there. And this selects your in point for the footage. And we're gonna to go to the last part of the shot before it moves out again. And we'll go there. We'll select the out point. So I'm gonna drag that footage into here. Okay, so that gives us our, our footage. So, we click back on the sequence again. And we go to editing. So we're now in the editing panel. So as you can see, we scrub for our, our footage. We've got the beginning to the end. And I don't know whether you noticed, but we are quite zoomed in at the moment. And this is because we want to be zoomed in for the first part of the shot, but zoomed out for the last part of the shot, because we want to keep the composition. So, this is our composition that we want to finish with. So, if, while we're in editing, if you click on the footage, you'll get your position and your scale markers. So, we're going to put the keyframes on, so you click both stopwatches, and it'll set a keyframe. And we're just going to adjust that. So, I want to keep the windmill central. I don't care too much if we get any great bars, but I want to keep the windmill central. Um, and we don't really want to zoom in any more than this, because we would degrade the footage. So so from that and then if we go to the end of the shot we then want to zoom out so we've got the position and the scale again so we're going to adjust again it'll automatically create a keyframe 
and the image needs to be quite similar. Now, it can't be exactly similar because unfortunately we haven't got enough real estate to do it, but it's, you know, it's, it's still going to be, it'll be closer, but still in the centre of the picture. Now, as you can probably see, we've got a nice big black bar at the top there. So, let's minimise that a little bit. But then that basically will be hidden, because I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But then when we zoom back out again, I don't know what you can see, but we can start to see the background move in there. So, we need to do two other things. A, we need to hide that black bar movement at the top. So, if we go to assembly again, we go to new, and we bring in some black video. Now, there's numerous ways of doing this. This is just the way I prefer. So, click OK and drag the black video over the top. If you hold Alt on your keyboard, you can click on the file and duplicate it and then let go. So now we've got two black video bars. And we want that to be throughout the whole of the scene. So we'll extend it to the end. We'll extend it to the end. This may not make sense at the moment. And let's turn one of these off and highlight one. So we're highlighting the bottom one, which is still visible. And we've turned the top one off and that's not highlighted. So let's just so drag this down so we can see everything. Now it's going to change now because I should change the template first so we're going to switch to the editing tab and it'll remember the settings so it'll look all different so we'll just stretch that back down again. Now what we need to do is firstly I like to have some guidelines so I can see what I'm going to do with these, this black video so if you go to if you right click anywhere on the screen and put your safe margins on you get this this box. Now what we're going to do is adjust the position of one, so it's literally above, right on the top line of the top safe margin at the bottom. We're then going to stretch the screen back up again, we're going to click on the other footage and we're going to do the same again, we're going to hide that one and make that one visible, drag it back down again and then we're going to move this one up so it's right at the bottom of the bottom one right there and then if we go back to assembly again and we stretch this back up we can put them both on and that basically gives us our shot you can see that the background is morphing in and it's that simple so that's how we achieved the shot that you saw at the beginning. And um, we're now going to quickly go and do another shot where we use a gimbal to do the same thing. So we're off to the park um, and you'll see what we do there. So here we are at the park and this is Cassidy. So Cassidy's going to sit in the place. And basically all we do for this shot is it's exactly the same as the drone shot. We basically get Cassidy to position herself, we get a centre frame and then we basically try and get a smooth pan or a smooth zoom. So to do this I basically stretch my legs out and kind of lean in and out again rather than having much of a, a jump. So I think we're going to use this next one. So we start zoomed out and then we zoom in. And that's it. She's done, off she goes. And that obviously gives us this result. So that's how we did the footage, but obviously after we finished the edit, we thought we'd spend a bit of time having a bit of family time because you've got to get balance in these things. So um, we stayed at the park and we got some B-roll and then we caught the sun coming down. So enjoy a bit of B-roll and thanks for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.